<laughs> okay. Um, well, um, welcome everybody. Um, good afternoon from um, Paris. Um, my name is Simon Baker. I'm uh, director of uh, MEP, uh, Maison European de la Photographie, and um, also one of the curators of uh, Diversity United, which is at this moment at um, in Tempelhof um, in Berlin. And I'm delighted that we can have a, a conversation this afternoon with one of the featured artists of the exhibition, uh, Renika Dijkstra, who I've known for a long time and been a huge uh, fan of, um, of, of her work. Um, hi, Renika, thank you for being here. Hi, hi. <laughs> um, <laughs> I thought we could start, um, we, we, um, we start, here with a, an installation shot of the of the exhibition just for those of you who maybe haven't had a chance to go to temple of yet it's an absolutely epic um epic large-scale exhibition it's six thousand square meters with um over 80 artists um from all over europe and the idea of the the exhibition is really to, it's a kind of a, a look at um art in europe uh, since 1989 um, and particularly thinking about artists whose work is engaged in, in different ways with, um, with questions of, of what it means to be European, what Euro Europe means to us. Um, obviously I'm uh, British, so Europe means something very different to me than it meant uh, three years ago, um, sadly. Um, but uh, I live and work in, in Paris, so I've tried to keep my uh, my fidelity to the European ideal alive in my in my uh, in my personal life, um, and what the, um, the 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 curatorial group for Diversity United selected artists working across a huge range of of media from painting, sculpture, installation, conceptual practice, um, film and video, um, and obviously uh, photography. And it's it's uh, to talk a little bit about one of the the key photographic works in the exhibition that we that we're here this afternoon and um just um before we start i'm um, talking with renica i also um just to let you know that if those of you who are watching have questions for renica if you can if you put the questions in the in the chat on um on um on youtube then um the diversity united team will, will try to keep keep running track of them and um, let me know um, before the end. So if you have specific questions, you can, uh, you can uh, let us know. Um, so Renika, um, fantastic to see you and um, fantastic to be able to see this installation picture of, of your work um, in, uh, in Tempelhof. I've got another picture of the installation, which is a bit more, um, we can see a little bit better. Um, the series which, uh, which we selected together um, to, um, to feature in the exhibition. It's called Almarissa, um, and it has a, a, a strange date, which I'm sure you can explain to us, <laughs> having been made over a, over a very long period of time, um, but starting in 1994 and going up until, um, up until last year. Um, so, I mean, my, my interest in, in um, or our interest, the curatorial group's, group's interest in this work was really to, to think about, of course, about your practice uh, as a, as a a photographer working with portraiture and working in series, but also thinking quite specifically about this question of of European identity and what it means to um, what it means to the the different communities and different um, different populations of of Europe, those who might feel themselves to be um, let's say uh, born Europeans and those people who've made their home here. As a, as a result of, of moving, displacement, immigration, uh, and so on. And I wonder if you could tell us a little bit to begin with about this, this work, because to me it's, it's a, an absolutely essential key work for the show. It talks, it, it raises so many issues about what it means to be European, but also what it means for photography to engage with questions of, of identity and place and change. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe with those few ideas, I can um, ask you to tell us a little bit about the, about the work. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I first, I was actually, it was 1994, and I was invited, um, um, I was invited to uh, participate in an art project, which was called uh, Pressing Engagement. And they wanted to press attention uh, to, um, to children of, um, of uh, asylum uh, seekers. Of refugees, and um, so I was sent to a refugee center in Leiden, the Netherlands, 
and um, I think I'm, I worked there for about a week. And um, um, so, yeah, I photographed there are different children and they come, came from all different countries. And um, so I just started to photograph there. I, I, I first thought I should show uh, the, the situation. Um, and so there were people um, uh, living in with 16 people in one room and they had all those beds um, uh, and they put blankets around the beds to, to get more privacy. And first I thought I should show that, that, that because yeah, that, um, but then it didn't really work. And, and so I found a little corner, uh, which I uh, was, uh, uh, yeah, sort of a, um, a closet where they put their clothes in. And um, so, um, and there, yes, I had my studio and I photographed the different children. And well, I picked them out and because they were all wearing track suits, um, because that was comfortable, they had to stay inside. But this was in March, this, so it was raining and cold outside. And, um, and I asked them for the occasion of the photograph to, uh, to, um, to, to put on nice clothes because that was for the, the picture and the picture was to, going to be presented on the Binnenhof, which is the, uh, where the government is located. Um, so, uh, and then, uh, then at a certain point I was standing on this, I was standing next to me watching the photograph and saw another girl and, and, and she was very, very shy. And, she, um, and then she's, yeah, I said, would you like to be photographed? Too. And then she said, yes. And so I said, well, do you have a nice dress? And then, <laughs> yes, <laughs> she went back to her mother. And then later I, I, I understand from her mother that they had been living um, for two years already from their suitcase because they were traveling. They were traveling around in, in Austria for a while before they came to the Netherlands. So you can see in the first picture, yeah, you can show the uh, Renika, uh, where, where had they come from? Just tell us Bosnia. where. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, they were from Bosnia. They were refugees from Bosnia, uh, from the war. And um, so, um, yeah, you see here, Elmrisa sitting in her Sunday best dress. And um, as you can see, the, the socks doesn't really match with her. The rest of her outfit, her mother told me later that she couldn't find uh, the, the right socks <laughs> because there was a, everything had to come out of the suitcase. Uh, and then you can also see that, uh, that her shoes are too small and pinches her feet. Um, but uh, yeah, for me, it was really afterwards because she's so pale and transparent. Um, it was such a moving picture to me. Um, so I saw her again on the presentation of the of the of the project, and then I I, I then I lost her. Um, I didn't see her anymore. But so, but after two years, I found the picture again, and I said, "Oh, well, how how?" I was just wondering how they were doing. Uh, so I called the center, and they said they moved, but they gave me a phone number. Um, and so I called the parents and asked them if I could meet them and, and I was just, yeah. So, and from that moment on, yeah, we became friends and I visited them like every three months or something. And I took a picture of Amrissa every two years. Shall I, shall I move on one? Yeah, bit? yeah. So if you see the second picture. Mm -hmm. So I thought that, that um, so it's always taken in her home, the place where she lives at the, at the moment. So, mm -hmm. and I thought I shouldn't give, yeah, I wanted to keep it a bit abstract. So I didn't want to show the whole interior. And I thought, you know, you can also give an indication of a space by right? just showing a piece of a carpet or a chair. And you can see that this image, these two images from 96 and 98, are both on the same the same corner, but then the, uh, you can see that they they painted a wall. They they painted a wall in, <laughs> in between the color new chair. You can see Anna that her feet are not reaching uh, the floor yet in the first picture, and uh, the the dress was sent by the grandmother from Bosnia. Uh, so 
And in the third photo, you see that Amres was always very interested in, in clothing and in, in and how to present herself. And uh, so that I think that third photo, because that's that's she bought that 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 outfit mm -hmm. on the right hand side, especially for the photograph. But then again, she didn't. She was too young to, so she didn't think about the socks. Again, <laughs> <laughs> don't really match. And she did some lipstick on. Um, and how how did um how was it for you to 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 be? For, to, had you done this before? Had you tried to go back to the same sitters again and again, or is it the first time you'd thought of doing this? This was actually the first time. Yeah, yeah. I was, you know, of course, from the beginning on, I, I had no idea for how long I would do this, um, how she would develop. Um, but I thought it was just interesting to see how she would, uh, um, yeah, how she would uh, be able to um, to assimilate to the to the to a, to a different culture than her own. Mm -hmm. Well, she spoke Dutch in like three months' time fluently. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, you can see in the first, I like that, you know, that by just showing not too many uh, things in the picture, that all, the, all the, the elements that you show become more important. So like the chair, you can see that the second hand chair, um, and you can see the details better if you uh, isolate them a little bit. So the, the her pose, um, her case, um, the clothing, the jewelry. You can see if the you can see in the large pictures that she's wearing rings. Mm -hmm. And when you, if we just very quickly go back to the first image, I mean, this must have been an incredibly strange um, situation for her to find herself in. This kind yeah. of this kind of very administrative, very cold, um, yeah, very cold place. Um, yeah, it, it seems to me as if you've almost caught that in in her in her expression as well this extremely transit uh, how do you say sort of intermediary space yeah not not exactly welcoming right <laughs> it's no, uh, no. and then in a Sunday best dress and it's not really something to celebrate <laughs> and then the chair and yeah it was I mean she was she was I think she was quite she was shy and sad and and yeah, yeah in, going through a lot of diff difficult situations and how did how did her um how did her is was she just with her mother or was she with other members parents of her? yeah mr parents with yes parents. and how did how did they feel about the the picture i mean were they because you're, you're not a, a, a i guess not a, like a an official photographer from the government right you're an artist who's making work yeah. did they yeah. un did they understand this um the yeah of course i think the more of this he was she just I mean, I think that at the moment she didn't quite realize. I said, "Oh, the sock doesn't match." You know, <laughs> that was the first thing what she said when she saw the picture. But I think she liked it. It's mm -hmm. not, of course, it's not. It's a quite a serious picture. It's not like, a, yeah, what you say, like a, a family picture. It's, it's. Um, but I think okay. they recognized that that the way they and Omrissa now says too that she through this older series of pictures that she. Mm -hmm reminds her on how she how she develops and how she felt at the time and but it's and, interesting you say it's not a family picture because there's something there's something in in all of your work and we'll see more of your work later but there's something very well i wouldn't say neutral but something very kind of um restrained about the way you take the pictures which is at odds with the way that people photograph themselves in their families right yeah, yeah. kind of um you're presenting, trying to create almost a sort of neutral corner in the house. Yeah, and of course, in the beginning, and I think that Amrissa said in the fourth picture that uh, Rineke, your pictures are always so, I'm, I always look so sad. <laughs> <laughs> but I said, yeah, but Amrissa, this is maybe a different kind of pictures than what you yeah. used to, but it's, you know, and like I, I have, I think then about the pictures of Alka Sander, where yeah, also my pictures that people have to sit still for quite a while because it's a four by five inch camera and every picture it takes about uh, well one or two minutes before you actually take the picture mm -hmm. um, and it feels always unnatural to me if people really smile for the photograph because that's yeah um, it's just a very 
it's th that you do that's what you do for for a picture and i wanted to capture something different maybe more focused on the pose and on the other way the shoulders for that you know you try to you try to find expressions i mean like that's what photography is you know you something is always moving and you have to um, to fix it mm -hmm. and then you look for what is um, um, what is significant about somebody at that specific moment you, you, you look now at the right hmm? You, you, you mentioned August Sander. It's an interesting reference because I guess Sander, we know somebody who is almost cataloging types of people. Yeah. It's interesting your, your, your statement that, you know, what, what is significant about her? Do, does she stand for, does Al Marissa stand for a lot of people in the same situation as her, or are you more interested in her? Yeah. Personal. Both, both. I think it's uh, what I what I always try to what I aim in my pictures that I should be both universal but at the same time very personal. So I really look at the person that I photograph, and I think it's really important that you observe them very well and try to capture something of their essence. Mm -hmm. um, and and that's just the way this is what she's doing with the hands, how she put, put her feet, and. I think this is also interesting because it's always sitting. It's always the same situation. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the floor, it's the wall, it's the chair. <laughs> That's it. Mm -hmm. And you see her changing. And you see the, the chair changing. You see the environment a little bit changing. Um, so, yeah, I try to tell maybe a different story by that and try to keep it universal and also that's also a reason I think why I don't want to have too many things in the background. Mm -hmm. like pictures of or, or lots of the environment because that makes it so much that you um, that you're going to judge it that you think as a viewer oh I cannot relate to this because she's so much different she's from a different um, culture or, or, and, and I try to avoid that I try to make it just more universal um, mm -hmm. I'll move forward because there's a lot of them. <laughs> People yeah, 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 yeah. may not be aware. And um, I, I was showing this to a, a colleague here in Paris who uh, didn't really believe that it was the same person all the way through. Yeah. Which is which is kind of amazing, right? She yeah. she seems to grow up incredibly fast at a certain yeah. point. Yeah. If you go back to the to the to the one before, yeah. See, it's that this is in one year, and then because she was changing so much at that time, and I visited. Mm -hmm every three months mm -hmm. she was she was changing so so fast and i thought oh we mm -hmm. have to do another one because you know it's like uh, from childhood to, to puberty it's a big step so so that was that was your decision your decision was to, to, yeah, to do that yeah when she needed to be documented yeah, I think at that time, <laughs> yeah at that time it's also 2002 2003 because i was going on so many things and and um in between times, do, do, do you think that this project changed your work, the, the other work that you were doing? How did, it, how did it play into what you were doing, the fact that you had this kind of appointment, regular appointment with one sitter? Yeah, the idea that nothing is really fixed, you know, and even I also made some, we made some at a certain point, uh, I think in 1996, 1998, uh, we made some video letters for the, for the, for the, the, for the family in Bosnia, mm -hmm. and and that's also again another moment. And then I, you know, you see, oh, she's she's changing all the time. Like every three months, she's different. So even even that, you know, it's like um, it's not, not nothing is fixed. I would say it's and it's always like a moment in time. It's um, it's always uh, capturing one specific moment, but like an, and. Yeah, but I realized too that that nobody is like just one dimensional, you know. Mm -hmm. Everybody is just so many different aspects depending on yeah. where you come from, what's your history. Um, um, and did, did, this might sound like a very silly question, but I'm going to ask it anyway because it, because of the context of the exhibition. Do you, do you did you have a feeling that she was trying to become or inadvertently becoming more Dutch somehow or not? Uh, in terms Absolutely. Of, yeah. 
yeah. you can see that's a little bit like um, as, as time goes on. I was thinking especially the next picture in 2005. Yeah. Like when she started to uh, dye her hair. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know obviously everybody in Holland doesn't have blonde hair. <laughs> but yeah, 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 yeah. She does suddenly look like a, like so, she really oh, does. Oh, yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Yeah, and then the second one she has black hair again and lots of makeup. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you never know, of course, what would have happened when she was staying in 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 Bosnia. What would have happened to her then? Maybe. Yeah. I, I keep going on these pictures. Yeah. I don't want to go too fast because they they're, they are really they're, they're really so incredibly different each time. Um, but this is obviously another huge difference. So in yeah. 2008, she has um, her own child. Yeah, so she was pregnant in the first one, second one. Yeah. She has her own home now. You see, this is the same, the same wall. Yeah. And and yeah. Did, do you think that changed the way she thought about being photographed as well? So cha changing her identity. Yeah, she was she was now a mother caring for her child. Um, um, she, so you can see that she dresses her child the same as she, <laughs> she <laughs> dresses with her own outfit. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, I'm going forward. And what you see is that she always wears socks because in her culture, yeah. they never wear shoes inside the house. Okay. So, this is very, this, this is something that that's also kind of consistent right from the beginning. Oh no, right from the beginning yeah. she had some shoes on, right? The very first picture. Yeah, the very was... first two that she has shoes on, but then from then on it's always just uh, no shoes on in the house. So now we're in 2013 and yeah. going forward. Um... You see that, can you show the, the one before? Yeah. See that on her arm, she has a tattoo. Uh -huh. It's the name of her child, of her, well, she has two children already at that time, and that's uh -huh. the name of the, her children tattooed on her. Then we're going forward almost towards now, right? 2015, yeah. 2017. You always see she gets more self confident. Yeah. She gets like a sort of grip on life. She's more, she has, a, she has. She's, 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 she's um, married for the second time. She has mm -hmm. two children now. Mm -hmm. She has a good job. Um, you can see how fashionable her house looks now. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, it's true. I mean, it's a, it's a, I mean, it is a portrait, it's a portrait, portrait project in one sense, but in another sense, there's so many, as you said at the beginning, there's so many other things going along with that in, in the, in the way that you're, you're taking the pictures and the environment she is. And she's, I mean, I guess it, it, she's just so much at home, um, which is an interesting question, interesting thing to say because um, she starts off with no home and um, really um, searching for somewhere to be. And you, you, you've documented her um, in integration, but also her success in yeah. in, um, in li literally making a life in, in yeah. a new country, which is something that I guess is one of the things that um, Europe as a as a concept is you know, at, at various moments in time, being more or less associated with that possibility. I think even the fact that we met changed her life. <laughs> yeah. Um, I remember that when she was a child, they had a picture of New York uh, <clears throat> above the table hanging from the Manhattan Bridge, I think, uh -huh. the Brooklyn Bridge. And it was always sort of a dream for her to go to New York. So when I had my exhibition in the Guggenheim, I took her along. And um, so mm -hmm. that, you know, all those kind of experience that she had um, also influenced her life, you know, mm -hmm. also. Um, and you put you put this uh, slide in at the end so we can. Yeah, I was, I, was, I, was, I was just fascinated because I had so many now to combine them, to look, to see, the, to see them. Um, to see her as a younger and an older one. And, and sometimes if you go to the next one, for instance, yeah, sort of here, she looks a bit um, tough, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Both of them. And you have, you have, of course, 
you know, it's like you have so many. Here she was, the ghost. There was difficult things going on in her life. She was here. She was, um, yeah, she was going through puberty. She had some problems. Um, and then the second one, she was just divorcing from her first husband. So mm -hmm. you can see the way she's sitting. It's like a bit like. Yeah, say, a uh, bit more kind of defensive in a, in a way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or like. Uh, and what to what extent do you think this? this um do you think that's something that you're reading or is it something that you you knew you were capturing at the time you know i i don't know it, it could be i don't think i captured it at the time um but you know an image is maybe also because you make like i make when i do a shoot a photograph like make like about 12 pictures mm -hmm. and you always pick out the most powerful one and i think it's more so that it feels that it's it captures something essential from your mm -hmm. right? Let, let's move on because we have so many amazing pictures in the slideshow and uh, I want to make sure that people can uh, can see a lot more of your practice to, to get some some context around it. Um, so this this project is is not um, it's not unique and I guess this idea of returning to the same sitter um, became a very important part of your work um, later on. But when you started, that wasn't something that you were doing frequently, right? No. So if you go back to the, the early 90s, so before yeah. you were before you made uh, that series, um, yes. you've, you've included a fantastic self-portrait. <laughs> yeah, actually that was a kind of a keyword because uh, before I, uh, I, I mean, I was in art school and then mm -hmm. after art school, um, I started to work for my magazine which sort of the, yeah, one of my teachers was an art director of, of, an, of a business magazine. Mm -hmm. And he asked uh, uh, his students to work for it. And we were very free, we could do, you know, they, they wanted more, more kind of more experimental photos and not that, and that, not that stereotype. <laughs> yeah. um, so he encouraged us to look at people in a different way. Um, which was good and, and from that I got a lot of commissions but at a certain point I felt that you know you're going from one job into another and I felt that I wanted to make something more substantial mm -hmm. and then I, and then I took two months off and uh, to think about the project and nothing came really up but that last two that last day of these two months I broke my hip and, and um, so um, and then I had to recover from that so we're swimming every every day, 30 laps. And well, the, also the other problem was I found with this um, with working commission is that people always, especially the businessmen, they want they know how they want to present themselves, mm -hmm. want to come across. And I always find it more interesting the way they were not so aware of the camera. It's very difficult because I always work with big cameras, first with a Hasselblad, later with a four by five inch. And it's a slow method of working. So you cannot really f make this in between photographs. And then I was just, I wanted to investigate if it was possible to make a more uh, natural, uh, uh, yeah, pose picture. So I, I, I decided to make a photograph of myself after swimming uh, for half an hour. And so that moment that you don't pose, that you don't think about your pose. And so mm -hmm. that was actually that brought me to the beach because I was so much interested in poses and how you what you can capture of somebody just by observing um, and maybe on kind of uncarded moments, um, which is very opposite from the way I work because what I said I work with this four by five inch camera. Yeah. But actually that brought me to the beach. Um, you see two examples. Um, I first went to uh, uh, I first made a lot of pictures in the Netherlands because I grew up in this place near the beach. Mm -hmm. um, and then I went to America because a friend of mine lived there and he invited me. And I took this picture of a girl uh, in Hilton Head Island. And then I realized how different that was from the Netherlands. Uh, uh, because these, then, then in America in the early 90s, people were much more... Uh, aware of how they wanted to present themselves and um, and this, uh, this this is something that connects very very closely with uh, with Al Marissa is that and this this series because I remember we, we had this series when I worked at Tate we had this series in the collection and we showed it in a in a yeah. in a um, 
in a big room of your work. And it's something that I think you became very identified with because of this question of, if you like, the sort of awkwardness or the transitional moment in adolescence, yeah. which, which is really key in Al Marissa, but here it's kind of almost uh, crystallized into, into one image for each person. Yeah. Yeah, I was just interested in, in this transitional moment, but and I didn't really felt it was so much like vulnerability or, or mm -hmm. it was just that that it was for me a symbol of when you when you're that age, nothing is fixed yet, everything is still mm -hmm. possible and you're and you're very open, you know, mm -hmm. and that, that openness, that 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 hesitation, that doubts that you have also make it possible for you to grow to learn and I, I somehow I think I uh, in the state of my life where I was then I, I recognized myself in there and I found it really beautiful um, that nothing was fixed yet and that that you know that was um, it, it's also a, it's a very interesting choice of place because it it's at the same time uh, the beach that we associate it with leisure and fun and holidays but at the same time it's a quite a strange place to have a formal picture taken yeah, yeah, yeah. The beach is somewhere where people are normally moving around and they're, they're making a lot of, I mean, uh, to me, uh, uh, I'm not a massive fan of beaches, but they're, <laughs> they're, <laughs> enough, but they're, they're noisy and lively and there's, yeah. you know, there's so much life and so much sound and so much, um, it is so, so much yeah. happening. And, and you've kind of made these, oh, very, very silent, quiet um, images in, in that place. Yeah. And what I what I like so much about the beach because it's just a natural place, you know. It's like, and the beach is always the same. And wherever you go, there's the mm -hmm. sand, there's the sea, there's the sky, <laughs> but it always appears in a different way because it depends on the time of the day, of the weather, of the kind mm -hmm. of the beach, of the light. Um, so actually, and and then because of four by five inch camera, which makes the background almost like after ten centimeters of a very uh, uh, um, you don't have uh, very much depth, uh, sharp. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The field of depth is very short. So mm -hmm. the background is always uh, out of focus, which makes it kind of a backdrop. Yeah. With a very natural one, of course. That, that's, that's really interesting you say that because they, they do, in fact, look exactly as if somebody has kind of, we would say, like photoshopped or. Yeah, yes, exactly. Stood, yeah. Stood in front yeah. of the. It, yeah. it, is there a lot of flash on the camera or not? It's just yeah, I use I always you used to fill in flash in the beginning. Uh -huh. it was, uh, not so um, but because you know it, like if it, th these pictures are both in the evening and and mm -hmm. when you would uh, do a normal exposure, then you would the persons would be too dark for the mm -hmm. background, so you need a flash in the flash. Um, and um, but they're really they're incredibly well. There's some there's some here that look as if they might be a bit more a bit more daytime, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are daytime, but then I, I thought, yeah. So it's, it's, but it's. You have to be careful that if you use too much flash, it looks very unnatural. So mm -hmm. I thought, yeah, it's like technical, but I try to also the the, the you see it on the girl in the dress. Mm -hmm. There is still light from the the sunlight is on her face too. So it should be always like a fill in, but it makes it it, it also lifts it a bit up from reality, isn't it? Because they yeah. look a kind of you see that something is not quite right, but you cannot really put the finger on it. What it is, you can see it is flash, but not that obvious. It's also because, I mean, uh, this is a British beach I recognize very well from having yeah. sore feet um, as a child <laughs> on those very stony, yeah, very stony yeah. beaches that we have. But the, 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 the detail on the stones around her feet is really incredible. It's almost too, too, yeah. too real, right? And then the sea suddenly it looks really like a backdrop behind. Yeah, 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 yeah. And do you know that, that I, when I take my pictures with the 4 by 5 inch camera, I see everything upside down. Right. And that helps me to see the shape, the shape mm -hmm. from somebody better, the figure better. Um, and actually, this, <laughs> you know, you know, Brighton. Uh, it, I, I went there, um, and it was raining every day. <laughs> that's a normal. Really? That's a normal and British summer. <laughs> the whole week it was raining in August, and so in between the showers, I went to the beach, and then I found this family swimming in the sea with their clothes on. I said, "What are you doing?" <laughs> and I said, "Yeah." We didn't want to go home first <laughs> to get a bathing suit because it was now sunny. So um, it was, and it's just like a scene in.
But the way she's holding her hands, I thought when I looked at the camera and I saw that, I thought it looks a bit weird. So I took the picture and I took another one with the arms just across the body. And then later I found out that it's, it's just such a beautiful detail. Yeah, it's it's really beautiful. It's almost like a, a sort of, I mean, that's something I wanted to mention, but it's almost like a, a, a 18th century portrait when you have those yeah. portraits of, of children in the 18th yeah. century and they're, yeah. They have very specific clothes and very specific gestures with them. Yeah. It kind of relates for, to me, it relates very much to painting rather than rather than photography. Um, yeah, and then, and then and then sometimes you could, I was so lucky with how the, the background matches with 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 them. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. The green in the sea is almost the same green as the dress. Yeah. I keep going because we have a lot. We have a lot, a lot, a lot more yeah. pictures. But um, th this, the 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 picture from Croatia is amazing. So he's fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Big character. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, he was, he was. He just swam, so that the, the flesh is reflecting mm -hmm. in his body. But then the way he's holding his hands against his mm -hmm. legs, but he's almost not touching it mm -hmm. and really like those kind of details and then the ears and the little clouds in the back it's all like it's sometimes it really becomes like it's a puzzle all those puzzle pieces and it yeah sometimes a really nice image that's also beautiful the the one from the ukraine is um absolutely yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. The, the three children also yeah right? Yeah. yeah, it almost it always reminded me of something, and then I found the, the early Picasso paintings. The remember the Harlequins? Yes, exactly. Yeah, they, they have something similar, like uh, the, yeah. It, 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 yeah, they're sort of together but not together, as if they were, exactly. as if they were uh, yeah. as if they sort of put together, as if you composed it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And it just happened because the little girl in between, she, she was very keen in having the picture, but the, the sister was pretty shy and the boy was extremely shy. So you, she put them together somehow. Well, yeah. this is what you, you get when people, I mean, I know you said, you know, you, you, it, we don't necessarily need to talk about the vulnerability, but you do get this sense of this very strange, awkward moments when... Yeah at that age when you're you're not really a child you're not really grown up you're you're not quite sure where you are yeah, it's that's, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> the, the girl on the end is desperate to be grown up and the, the girl in the middle is desperate to be a a, a child <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. i just move along because we, we have as i said we, we have we, we've used a lot of time and we didn't get to your next series but um this series also we had at tape which is one of yeah. the yeah. which i yeah. absolutely love um can you talk a little bit about how this came about and how you managed to um, get the confidence of the of the sitters to to allow you to take these pictures? Because they're yeah. very very soon after the babies were born, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I um, when my best friend gave birth of her first child, I was there, and and then mm -hmm. I was like, I mean, I, I never had to experience something like that. You know, the pain mm -hmm. they go through and. Oh, it's like so, and then and then you realize that everybody has to go through that. But you know, I never. If you see advertisements, you always see these pictures of the of the smiling mom with the sleeping baby, and you never see it like the way it really is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I was wondering, and because there were so many mi mixed emotions, you know, it was like my friend was exhausted. She was like uh, relieved. She was happy. She was. Uh, for the first time mother, um, all those, they're ha happening so much in one moment. So I was wondering if you could capture that in one picture. Um, so I asked around and it was really hard to get people, but then I found people, you know, when I when I was talking about, mm -hmm. it, said, oh, I know, I know somebody whose friend is giving birth. And, um, and when I make the pictures, yeah, we, I, I said to them, you know, you know when we, we, they were very open and when mm -hmm. I said, well, you know, when you when you see the picture and you don't want me to show it, then mm -hmm. well, it was fine, you know, was, let's give it a try. And the and, other thing I should say as well, just for the audience that um, because the, we saw the installation from Al Marissa and they're, they're not they're not so big, the, the photographs, but these these are very large. They're, they're, they're not yeah. life size, but they're, they're, they're very, very big, right? Yeah, that's then less than than life size because for me it's always important that you can still relate it to it as a viewer. Mm -hmm. That you it should not be if it's too big, you cannot relate to it anymore. Then it's like mm -hmm. it's that's doesn't yeah. So this are not extremely they're bigger, but 
I think the, the image itself is 117. Mm -hmm. So it's not huge, but it, it's big enough to, 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 to get this monumentality. Yeah. Um, and you, and you, we, I mean, uh, uh, sorry, I went forward. Um, at Tate, we showed there were three of them along the Yeah, way. right, yes. Very, very powerful yeah. sense of being able to, at the same time, really concentrate on one individual sitter, but also almost making comparisons between them, which, yeah. is, which is fascinating. You know? Yeah, and, 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 and for me, it's always important what the same as with uh, Omarissa, that it's that at one point you focus on something which is really universal, and on the other hand, you, 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 when I make a picture, I really concentrate on, uh, on that specific person. Um, or I really try to capture something from who they are at that moment, of course. <laughs> and and th this, just, just to make the link, so that here you're, you're dealing very specifically with, with questions of, of motherhood and, and um, I guess what it means that the change that happens to the to the mother, but also the the you know the um, the change to their body, but also the change to their life. It's like the moment that their yeah. life is going to change. When when you started making the, the next series, which is oh, it's at the same time, <laughs> it's very, yeah. very very different kind of. Um, let, let's say just after something happened, it reminds me of yeah. this sort of like. A, these always remind me of Don McCullen's like shell shock marine, you know, like <laughs> you don't know what happened like five minutes before. Yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah. figure is, uh, is uh, what's how, how did this series come about? It's, it's an incredible it, series. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 actually the same year as that I made a mother. It's the same, actually mm -hmm. the same half. It is the most of the mothers were early, the first part of 1994, these two. Um, yeah, same. I was I was interested in um, in yeah trying to capture different emotions, and uh, I, I was teaching at that time. And uh, every year we went to uh, to a city so that uh, that the students could work on their own projects. And one day we went to a little village where a bullfight on the Sunday there was a bullfight, and I can we can just at the moment that all those uh, there was in Portugal all those. Uh, bullfights came out of the arena and and like here they were covered in blood and smiling and yeah. it was I took some photos and I thought this is really amazing <laughs> so um, uh, so I went back the year later and um, um, it's it's just that they're, they're incredibly intense I mean there's something yeah. so intense about them because you you know that they're because you know what they've been doing and you know what they've just escaped, they've kind of escaped with their lives uh, yeah. in, a, in a way, but they have incredible um, poise and incredible intensity. Yeah, yeah, and then the torn out clothes and the, and mm -hmm. the blood on the, on the shirt. Um, yeah, it's like that moment that, that's so concentrated, there are so much adrenaline. Mm -hmm. um, um, and I thought that the women were more like people get really introvert somehow uh, mm -hmm. after this this life threatening experience I would say. Um, so let, let's just go back to because we we we're, um, we're we're going along through time, but there's that I wanted to go back to the idea of the the, the people that you had photographed serially over different delays of time, yeah. like like Al Marissa. And um, there are two series that you've chosen here. One is um, in Israel and the other is in, in uh, the French Foreign Legion, yeah. um, which are both incredible series. Um, did this come out of, because did this come out of the, the experience with El Marissa, the idea of going back and photographing? I'll just go forward so we can see. Did that come out of yeah. that idea? Yeah, yeah, I think so somehow. Um, I was, you know, I've always uh, the, um, I went to Israel because I was invited to do an exhibition um, and, and then the sister of the assistant in the museum, her sister was going to the army that week and, and I went along with them to bring her away, there's a whole ceremony. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, this was really a sort of moment in their life that they, I mean, in Israel, everybody has to go into the army, you know, you have to, I, you have to submit your identity to a, to a more, um, yeah, more um, mm -hmm. uh, um, so for something which is for your country. And, and I think that that's really something. Um, and I was also interesting, that's how I photographed the day, all those in the induction day. And then I started to develop, uh, to, to follow some of them. 
and that 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 process is even even more strong in the the French Foreign Legion Olivier this is a yeah I have to say like it is is one of my favorite series because we were lucky to have it um donated to the tape yeah. one of our by one of our um patrons while while I was there and it's an absolutely stunning body of work and I think like as well it deals with th this question of following as, as you did with uh, with Al Marissa, but here almost no background context. So all of the context is in yeah. is in his clothing and in the, yeah. in the way his his hair changes and his body changes. Can you talk a little bit about this? It's, a, it's such a strong series. Yeah, it's like uh, so. Olivier was um, uh, actually you know when you go into the French Foreign Legion, you get a new identity. It's like that's that's part of it, the rules, and and so you, there are a lot of people who had problems in the past and who are yeah, seeking for a new identity. But mm -hmm. just okay, it was different. He was not a, not a standard <laughs> for a legion. He was, he was, he, he grew up in Toulouse and, and, and Toulouse is one of those um, uh, that um, the, the, the foreign legion is based, one of the places where the foreign legion is based. So he saw all those people uh, in the streets in his youth and he was, fascinated by that and and he wanted to join them so at the age of 14 <laughs> we, we <laughs> at the age of 14 he applied but they we, we think them. of it being a pun almost like a punishment i mean a very kind of yeah. elite uh, army group but also yeah as you said something that you you kind of go to because you have to not yeah not you want exactly to. so it was it was quite remarkable that uh, remarkable that he he wanted to join that army um, but he, I somehow he understood that that was the best army in the world. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but if you go back to the first one, yeah. it's like it's the same day, yeah. It's, it's, uh -huh. it's the way all, induction day. So the first one is when the way it's already, all, already a T-shirt from the army. But mm -hmm. the second one, he has shaved his head, and then the shoulders. You know, you see already this how proud he is and how yeah. more self-confident and. Um, but that's something that comes through when when you see the whole series on the wall, like in a line, you, you really get yeah. this incredible. It's only stuff. three years. It's quite amazing yeah. how 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 he changed. He he changes so fast, um, and he's so um, he's so as well. It's something about intensity and um, and and a sort of um, self possession that I guess is what the, yeah. the legion would would um, would train somebody would would bring out in them, right? Yeah. Yeah. And as we go forward, and his real name is also not Olivier, but his real name yeah. is Nicolas, uh -huh. but because this is his fr French Foreign Legion identity. And here and in the in the um, in the right one, he's incredibly trained, and mm -hmm. so I photographed him in different places because they they went to Gabon at a certain point, uh, mm -hmm. right there, and also in Djibouti. So the yeah. the right one is in. Um, Kabon, Kabon. Is that the last one? Yeah, when he's, one, he's, yeah, ab he's ab absolutely a man now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, with his uniform, he's like, um, yeah, it's really good to see him. Okay, we, we're coming to the end of our time, but we have a few yeah. more series because th this is a th there's some fantastic work that you did in um, with groups with groups of figures. Um, you've chosen a few from the series in the park in uh, Amsterdam. Yeah, if you, it's uh, what I what uh, so this is about the transition of landscape because mm -hmm. the next two pictures, they, then these three pictures in the park are exactly the same spot but at different mm -hmm. in the over the. I go there and then go back. Yeah. Yeah, you see. So the, it's, I was just interested in how you can use the landscape and the, the landscape is changing so much. Um, 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 just photograph visitors. It's they're absolutely beautiful. The light, the light in these are absolutely amazing, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. I just go on to the to the next series, and then I have some questions. Oh yeah, maybe you can talk about this because it's again completely different. Uh, yeah. <laughs> then, yeah, I. And this really does take us back to the paintings I was mentioning from the 18th century. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. Great paintings. How did, how did this come about? Well, I was already interested in family portraits somehow. Oh. Uh, and this is, uh, sometimes I, 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 people ask me if I can do a family portrait. And, you know, I, 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 I kind of like that. Um, it's that parents ask that, like a specific 
they, they to keep it as a kind of a memory, but it's there. It's more like yeah, it's more like a real portrait than than the snapshots they take themselves or the family portraits. Yeah. And so it's more like an official portrait. <laughs> <laughs> and this was a um, this was a um, a present for a grandmother uh, uh, from the from her daughters, so that the grandchildren. From it's, it's, it, I mean, they're exactly, I mean, this is exactly what we would expect from a, a, a beautiful kind of country house painting in the 18th century. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, the, and the way they are, they, they push, yeah, the way they are almost like young, uh, I mean, they look like adults, no? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's incredible. Okay, before we, before we have some questions, oh, there's, there's another fantastic one from... Uh, this is a, a, this is, a, yeah. a, this is a, in in a girl that I made a film of Mariana uh -huh. and her sister Sasha. Um, so I thought that the, her their ambition is in their legs, like for both of them. She's a dancer, Mariana, and yeah. and uh, Sasha is more like a secretary. In a, um, and I thought it was interesting how you can how you can just show something with uh, just the, the pose, the way they pose, the way they yeah. How they express themselves, and then the interior always says something not about them, but about the parents, no? Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just before we before we go on to the questions, um, I wanted to just show. I, I'm, I'm sorry to go past these. No, I'm not sure. I just wanted to show a little bit of the film. Maybe you can just talk a little while we're watching it, because um, yeah, you can see the film because I, I love the the way that you you worked on, you moved into film um, with. Um, in, in those years. So maybe tell us about this one. Well, you know, I, I, I was invited by Jay Liverpool uh, to, to uh, uh, his Peter Korsler to, to participate in an exhibition, The Fifth Floor. And mm. they asked me to, to, commun to do something with, uh, with the audience. Um, and then one day I saw a school class. And uh, so they built a studio in, 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 the, in the museum. Mm -hmm. And uh, one day I saw a group of children, school children, and, and I thought I should work with them. I, I was always interested in how, how you have all those school classes is physically in, in the museum in, in mm -hmm. the United Kingdom. And I was just interested in how they, um, if you show them a picture, how they relate differently to that picture. And actually this was just a, a, a part of it that I, filmed a, a young girl um, uh, making a drawing of, of the of the of the painting mm -hmm. um, I really like her concentration and and like her, the monumentality of her the way mm -hmm. she's sitting and and just that nothing happened but then the, the, the there's just a coincidence then the girl on the the girl on the other side next to her, her, she lost her pen and she asked Ruth, do you have a pen? And, she said, and then she's distracted from what she's doing. And the film is like uh, 10 minutes or something. And um, so and sometimes she's distracted and she, then she goes back into it. Into her, it it's, in, it's, it's really incredible because it really is just like, a, it's just like any of the other portraits in a way, other than that yeah. it's moving. No? You, you really have the sense of it, of it being a portrait. Yeah, this is just a clip. No, the, yeah. the, the real part is is much longer. And then and then the, the um, and this is the 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 the, the group of um, children who look at uh, looking from the top. So they 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 looking, and I work with three cameras. Um, um, and they were all through the faces and the rule for the cameras was that they had to follow the conversation mm -hmm. um, so the children are speculating uh, because it's about weeping woman from Picasso mm -hmm. um, uh, she's crying and they are wondering why she's crying and they're speculating what uh, could have happened mm -hmm. to her but so in a way it's, it's interesting because they, 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 they say what they they are talking about what they see, but at the same time, uh, they reflect themselves in, in them, in in the woman, um, in the painting. Um, but you can also see it's like this is a so they're watching a portrait, but they become a portrait themselves. Yeah. It gives a sort of the dynamic dynamic of the group. Mm -hmm. um, 
And there's one curl in the group which you don't see here, but she is more sensible than the others. The other ones are all talking about maybe she lost her money. <laughs> Uh, or maybe she stole the wedding cake and then she, she regretted it. And the other girl said, she said, maybe she's just lonely. <laughs> it's, and and uh, she identified, she could identify herself with the, with the crying woman. Um, so, I was, so you get a sort of an impression of a group, but you see all those individuals, but at the same time, um, yeah. No, it's fantastic. Dynamics. Um, um, well, listen, I'm going to go, I'm going to go back a couple because um, just so I can ask you a couple of the questions that have come up. Um, thank you. First of all, thank you so much for going through so much of your work. It's been absolutely fascinating. It was fascinating for me. I hope it's fascinating for the people uh, watching. Um, we had a couple of questions about uh, Al Marissa from the beginning. Um, one about how much preparation she did or you did for the pictures. Was, was, was okay. there a lot of, um, I don't know, hair and makeup or... Did that change? I'll go back to the beginning so we can see. Uh, yeah, she, because the, the, the first picture was about uh, her best clothes, so we, we, we kept that. Yeah. She, she always made, I, I never, I never uh, have any comments um, on the clothes. She's, that's what she's doing. Yeah. Um, so I that surprised myself. <laughs> but she always wants to show her uh, on her best at yeah. that m moment. And sometimes, you know, in puberty, it was a little bit different. Uh and did, um, I, I have a, a, a follow-up supplementary question. Did you exhibit it as it was going along or did you wait until you had a certain number before you exhibited it? I mean, what was the first time that you showed it? Yeah, I showed when, it quite early after two weeks right. already because okay. I had no idea, you know, what's, yeah. what's, what's, what's going to happen. And even after the first, when the baby, I thought, well, man, this, man, this might be a good moment to stop. Mm -hmm. Because um, now she's a mother of her own. Yeah. But then I thought, well, why should I stop? <laughs> it's life is going on. And, uh, but that's, that's another of the questions that came on the chat was, um, how long do you think you will continue to do this? Yeah. <laughs> you have an idea about that? Are you going for this? As long as I'm is interested, I think. Yeah. Uh, and um, as long as I feel that it, that it, that it adds something yeah. to the city. But I still feel it's so interesting because she has now the same age as I am when I started to make the pictures. Mm -hmm. of her right so, and and we have a really close relationship as you can imagine you know we are friends we, mm -hmm. we yeah we, we see each other quite a lot so you, you stay in touch you stay in touch all the time and you 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 kind of in touch with her life that must be really unusual in the sort of history of portrait photography i guess yeah it is yeah 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 but it's it feels very special because it's yeah. like i'm a sort of a second mom for her <laughs> yeah um no we we really close to them and um it's it's it is it's actually it's great you know that you can um can have that friendship with um this yeah it, she means a lot to me of course yeah. <laughs> well listen we we did a, a, an hour and uh, you answered a lot of questions um so maybe it's a good time to stop it is fantastically interesting and um thank yeah. you very much for your time on a sunday and, thank, you. thank you thank you for taking part in the exhibition i'm going to go right back to the very beginning thank you very much for, for taking you. part in the exhibition yeah. in berlin and um i hope many people will be able to go see the show which um um is is as i said absolutely huge and full of um uh, I, I could say i guess uh, renick is in really amazing company um, and we're, we're very lucky that she agreed to pass, participate in the show. Uh, but thank you so much thank and um, have, a, have a great rest of your Sunday. Thank you, uh, those of you, for um, taking part. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.